Welcome and or welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah Blackwell and today I'm going to be sharing with you recommendations for adult standalone fantasy books. So I'm a big fan of fantasy books as y'all know but I really sometimes just don't feel like getting into a big series right? Sometimes I just want to read a standalone. So I have 12 fantasy book recommendations for you that are all standalones or can be read as standalones. I love all of these books for different reasons. Some are epic fantasy, some are a little bit romantic. There's some cozy books on this list as well as some fairy tale retellings. Just a heads up, I have a cold. So if my voice is a little bit froggier than usual, that is why I am struggling through this, but I'm gonna do it, it's okay. If you have not already subscribed, I would love to have you do so. All of my social media is linked down below in the description, including my Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. Please comment down below with your recommendations for standalone fantasy books so that viewers can check out those recommendations and get even more ideas for some standalone fantasy books that they can pick up. And also for me, because I would love more standalone fantasy recommendations. Don't forget to click the like button and let's get into this video. So the first book on my list is more of like an ethereal atmospheric fairy tale retelling. It's not technically even a retelling, this is more of an origin story, and that is The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine. This was one of my favorite books that I read last year. It is very atmospheric and character driven. It's a very slow going plot. It is a much slower paced book, so if you're okay with character driven slow paced books, maybe check it out. This is a villain origin story of Lady Gothel from the Rapunzel fairy tale. Her mother passes away and she basically goes on a quest to try to find out about her mother's religion and her mother's magic. And in the process she finds the Tower of Gothel and things happen from there. I don't want to get too far into it. Like I said, it's very slow moving, but it is beautiful. I especially think it's wonderful to read in the fall because there are lovely descriptions of fall gardens and fall foods. It also takes place in the forest. It just feels very atmospheric and it was a lovely read. I really liked it a lot. Keeping in the atmospheric fairy tale esque vibes, but with a bit more of a faster paced plot, we have Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. T. Kingfisher really just blew up um, on social media recently. People have been talking about her all over booktube, loving her works, reading her backlist, reading all of her new releases. She writes fairy tale esque fantasy books some fantasy romance and also she writes horror as well. This is one of her fairy tale retelling type books. It's not actually a retelling, it's just almost like its own fairy tale. It feels like a very whimsical historical fantasy with some good atmosphere. It's fairly short, um, but this is about this girl. She's a princess. She's I think the third daughter. She's at this nunnery and her older sister's married this very evil prince from a neighboring kingdom. And she basically is on a quest to try to save her sister from this ruthless guy who she believes is hurting her sister. She goes on this quest and in order to get the aid of this local witch, she has to perform these tasks, including weaving a cloak out of nettles and building a dog of bones and enchanting him to be alive. T. Kingfisher always has the best animal companions and I honestly think one of her best is in this book because there is a demonic chicken in this book and I freaking loved it. Lots of just quirkiness and a cute little romance in it as well. Our main character basically builds a band of misfits to get together to go on this quest with her, including a knight and a fairy godmother. If you haven't already read this book, I know it's been fairly popular on booktube, but if you haven't read it already, definitely check it out. Moving on to, I feel like an industry standard, or at least a booktube standard for standalone epic fantasy, and that's Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. This is probably tied for my number one favorite Brandon Sanderson book of all time, next to Words of Radiance from the Stormlight Archives. But this is a standalone, for now, eventually, years down the road, there may be a sequel, but for now it is still a standalone and it reads as such. And this has a really cool magic system involving breath and colors. I loved the love story in this as well. I feel like this is the most romantic of Brandon Sanderson's books. It's about these sisters who are princesses and one is supposed to basically save their kingdom by marrying this god-like king. He's like a god king. But it turns out that her other sister goes in her place and things kind of go willy-nilly from there. The sister who's supposed to have gone for her kind of just 
goes on a quest to save her sister. There's also a character who's supposed to be a god, but he starts questioning his god nature, um, which is very interesting. I really liked the commentary on religion. I liked the romance aspect, and I also just loved the twists and turns that Brandon Sanderson brings to his plots. This one is just an all-time favorite. I cannot wait to reread this. I want to reread this soon, if I can. Another epic fantasy standalone that I adore is this Asian-inspired fantasy called The Sword of Kaigen by M. L. Wang. I think this, yeah, this was my favorite book of 2022 for good reason. I love the characters in this story. I love the magic system. It's based on elements. Here on the Sword of Kaigen, where our main characters reside, they have water magic and they work with ice a lot. Um, trying to wield ice swords, which is really cool to watch. Um, it follows a mother and son, the son basically trying to follow in his father's footsteps, and the mother trying to do her duty as a mother and a wife, even though she remembers basically being a badass in her past um, and a fighter who could really wield a sword and do some damage. But now she's a mother and she's trying to do her best um, in that role, but it's very hard and it's very constraining for her. And I loved watching that struggle. I love watching her growth. I love what happens here on the Sword of Kaigen. They are attacked by the country that they are currently at war with. Things get crazy. It's got a very unique plot structure. It's not a normal plot structure. It's a little bit different. You get like a big climax basically halfway through and then a lot of the plot is actually the aftermath of the climax. So a little bit different. So if you have an open mind just yeah make sure you go into it with an open mind but I adored this book and it made me cry. It made me feel so many things. Um, it was just extremely impactful. So I definitely recommend The Sword of Kaigen. Another ultimate all-time favorite book of mine is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This is an atmospheric, ethereal tale that is beautifully written, and it's about a night circus. It's about the circus that comes and goes in the night. You never see it coming. It just basically appears, and it's open at night, and it's extremely magical, and this is basically fantasy meets magical realism, I would say. Um, because it feels like a historical fantasy, but where this magic kind of exists and they talk about it like it's almost like science, not scientific, but I don't know how to describe it. It's just in a world on its own. It's totally unique. Erin Morgenstern is just a lovely writer and it really gives fall vibes as well. Please read this book in the fall. That's like the honestly the best time to read this because of the descriptions of food and like spiced cider and just all the descriptions are very fall-esque so definitely definitely read it um, in the fall if you can. Another favorite but this one is from this year and that's Sword Heart by T. King Fisher. So another T. King Fisher but this one is like a fantasy or romance but I would say it's equal parts fantasy and plot and then the romance as well. This is about a woman whose husband has passed away and when her husband's uncle passes away, he leaves everything to her. But her in-laws are not very happy about that, and they try to lock her away to steal her inheritance. In this process of being locked away, pulls a sword that she thinks is just like an antique relic off the wall to try to unalive herself. She can't figure out how to do it, but she unsheaths the sword, and out comes a knight. And so kind of similar to a genie, I would I feel like but he comes out of a sword instead of a bottle. And now he basically has to protect her. And so he decides to take her to go find a lawyer and get this situation resolved as quickly and effectively as possible. Once again, in Tiki Fisher fashion, a band of loners gets together and they're all quirky and, and hilarious. There's an animal companion and they go on a quest together to save the day. I love it. I loved this book. I really love this book and it just gave me all of the vibes. I love A Good Quest by T. King Fisher. Another historical fantasy, this is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Merlet. Technically, yes, this is the first book in a series, but each book follows a different person and this definitely reads like a standalone. You do not have to continue on in the series. Um, so it definitely reads like a standalone. 
and this is about Sorsha, and this is a retelling of the, I can't remember what the story is called, but it's a retelling of, is it the Six Swans? Something like that. Basically, she and her brothers have been cursed by this evil enchantress who their father marries, and she can no longer speak, and her brothers are turned into swans, and she has to save them by making these sweaters. And so, so there are parts of this book that are really hard to read. The struggles that Sorsha goes through, um, you feel her pain. You feel it so deeply. Um, I really loved this book. It really was impactful to me. It was a favorite book that I read. It was one of my favorite books I read last year. And it just, I feel like this is probably my favorite Juliet Merlier book I've ever read. Um, and I think that a lot of people would agree with me on that. This is just a work of, it's, it's a masterpiece. It's a work of art. And it's beautifully written and so impactful and character driven and lovely um, and painful. It, it, it comes very close to Robin Hobb in terms of the amount of character development and pain that the author puts you through. It definitely has those vibes, but Sorsha is so strong and she is just full of perseverance and I loved it. I loved it. Definitely recommend if you want a really good character driven story that will really hit you in the feels. Kind of on the opposite terms, if you want a quirky weird book that you don't fully understand, maybe try Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. This is also one of my favorites of all time. It's been a bit since I've read it so I do want to reread it this fall. I don't even know how to describe this book to be honest, but if you've read Neil Gaiman before you know what I mean by that. This is about London Below, okay? And London Below is basically another world that most people don't know about. There's angels, there are demons, there are really mean people out to get you. Magic is something kind of weird, kind of dark, kind of dangerous. And our main character, comes across this world when he basically he comes across this girl bleeding out in the street and he decides to help her her name is door she takes him to london below she's got these people chasing her and craziness ensues from there it's really hard to describe this book but it's really fun and quirky weird dark definitely some horror elements some suspense some magic fantasy some i don't even know Definitely very quirky though. Um, it's Neil Gaiman at his best. A lot of people consider this to be a modern classic and I would definitely agree. Definitely also would love to reread this. If you've read Neil Gaiman before and you haven't read Neverwhere, what are you doing? Go pick it up. Something a bit cozier and less creepy would be Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. If you've been on booktube for any amount of time, at least on fantasy booktube, I'm sure you've heard of this book. It basically blew up last year and this is a cozy fantasy about an orc and she's done fighting um, other people's wars. She just wants to open a coffee shop and just live a calm life and it's about her doing that. There's a romance, there's found family, there is just cute quirkiness in a small town and the town is very classic fantasy like imagine like Dungeons and Dragons. I just I loved this book. I loved the found family. Some people say that this is no plots, all vibes, but I don't fully agree with that. I actually thought there was a pretty good plot in here, similar to what there might be in A Cozy Mystery, except for there's not a mystery, but there definitely is a conflict. There are these people there that want to extort her, and um, they're basically like local gang that kind of runs and controls the, the local towns and they want to extort her and get money from her just for her having the um, coffee shop. And so there is that. There's also our main character, Viv, um, who she's also fighting her nature and how to deal with these things because she's used to using violence to get her way. But she doesn't want to be like that anymore. She just wants to be like a normal orc. So yeah, there's a lot of internal and external struggle, but overall it is mostly just very cozy and fun to read about the lattes and the cinnamon rolls. It will make you want to eat a cinnamon roll, that's for sure. Like I said, I'm sure you've heard of it, but I had to mention it because it was a five star that I adore and sometimes you do just want a cozy fantasy. I think this is my last retelling on this um, list, but this is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I've also read her book Uprooted. I like them both 
fairly equally. I think I like Spinning Silver a touch more. This is a Rumpelstiltskin retelling, but there's also a retelling of the original Cinderella in here as well. Um, that's less talked about, but you're actually following three different POVs in there. Well, there's more than three POVs, but you're following mostly three female characters and their struggles as women. Our main, main character is Miriam, and she's known for turning silver into gold, not literally, but figuratively in terms of her abilities as a banker and someone who lends out money, a money lender. Her father, who's been running the business her whole life, is not doing a great job, so she takes over. In this process, she catches the eye of the Ice Fae. The king of the Ice Fae or Ice Elves goes and asks her to complete these three tasks. And if she does, then he's going to marry her. And she doesn't really want to marry him, but he basically makes it so. And because he says it, that's what it is. The Fae in here are tricky. They are just really different. I like the way that Naomi Novik... Um, wrote them kind of similar to Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies if you've read that so very dark they don't have the same kind of levels of empathy that humans have they their value centers are completely different than humans um so I thought that was very interesting this was very atmospheric as well I loved the writing style I felt like the climax wasn't done very well um, but I find that to be a common issue in Naomi Novik books. I just don't think that's her strong suit. Um, and I still really love this book. I think I give it 4.25 stars. I have two more standalones to talk about. Um, I don't want to be here forever, so hopefully I can talk about them quickly. Um, but because my voice, because my voice is starting to go. Both of these books are epic fantasies. The first is Dragon Mage by ML Spencer. And yes, ML Spencer has now said that she is going to continue on. There's going to be more books in the series, but this book does read as a standalone. Um, there's no cliffhanger or anything at the end. And this is really cool. It's got a school setting. Um, it's got like a fantasy school setting trope, chosen one trope. There are portals to enter different worlds. I think there's three I think there's three like worlds that basically sit on top of each other in this and so we follow our main character Aram and he thinks he's a misfit and there is representation with Aram of um of being on the spectrum and I thought it was done well um I am not on the spectrum but I know those who are he has a special magic gift that people would die for so he is being chased and basically ends up in a magic school and things go from there and he becomes a dragon a rider and it's just it's a really 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 good book i loved it it feels very classic fantasy it does feel young for adult it feels almost ya but kind of right there on the edge but i did think the world itself was fairly unique and it gave those classic fantasy feels that I'm always looking for because I love classic fantasy. Last but not least, a very famous and huge epic fantasy standalone, and that's Priory of the Orange Tree. I'm sure you've heard about this, especially its um, prequel came out recently, A Day of Fallen Night. I haven't read that yet, but I would like to. This is a fantasy book about dragons, and we follow multiple characters, two of which are females on opposite side of the world. One is trying to become a dragon writer, I believe. The other is queen. Um, and where we have the queen on that side, they, they hate dragons. They think they are evil. And where obviously we have the dragon rider, she and her side of the world worship dragons. And then there is this evil entity that is rising and they, and they basically have to come together to try to stop it. That is a very general synopsis. Obviously there's a lot more to it. I really liked the dragons in this. I also liked the world a lot. I liked the characters. The characters weren't the strongest part, nor was the plot, but I would say the world was probably my favorite part of this book. I also liked the female representation. There was a sapphic romance as well that I adored, and I don't remember there being many sapphic epic fantasies before this book, so I feel like I really appreciate that as well. So there you have it. Those are 12 standalone fantasy books for you to add to your TBR should you wish. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, comment down below, give me your recommendations for standalone fantasy books. If you have not already subscribed, I would love for you to do so. All of my social media is linked down below in the description, including my Goodreads, Instagram, and Twitter. Until next time, fellow readers, keep reading and living your best life. Still I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts
hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away. Yeah, 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 yeah. As you fade away.